Howdy folks, my name is Darren from RC Scale Models and today we have a brand new kit 124 scale from Ming It's their Fokker D1 triplane um, They did do a 132 scale triplane That was a uh, collaboration with Wing, Wing Nut Wings um, But this is their, their version now I believe um, Is it upscaled from the 132 scale? I don't, don't believe so because I think there is structural differences and stuff. This is the limited edition version. You do get a medal within the kit, which is the uh, known as the Poor Lumerites, if that's how you pronounce it. But English terms known as the Blue Max. Um, I'm not going to go into detail because I don't really know a lot of history on, on the medal. But what I do is leave a link in the description to the Great War YouTube channel with Indian Idol. He goes and talks about the medal and some other history stuff to do with the airplane and pilots and stuff and the Red Baron itself because there is a Red Baron version in this kit. It's one of his early airplanes just before he had his complete famous red red airplane, which is obviously the Red Baron, but we get into that. So Nice sturdy box. We take this sleeve off. Um, that is what the metal can potentially look like, or what it does look like. Uh, we will show you in, in the box. There is a standard version, which just looks like this without the metal. Um, but you are going to pay a little bit more for the metal if you do like that kind of thing by collecting medals and stuff, um, which I have done, which is the reason why I bought it. Um, it's loaded with plastic. Um, Pretty cool, the clear engine detail. We do get a book and history cards. Here is the middle. We will take a look at a piece of information and a competition type thing. Your photo etch parts, nice decal sheet, and a piece of uh, material for your seat belts. So let's get into this. So in this pack is all the paperwork. You start with these, these are information cards, history, um, we got it in Japan language I believe. Um, so if you wish to read it, pause the video. Um, and then we do have them in English as well. Some people like these, some people don't. I think they're pretty cool. Um, and then you got it in uh, languages, which is English version. This one looks like Russian language. No, uh, this one is in Russian. Pretty cool. But as for the instructions, you've got the nice booklet, nice uh, image of, on the front of the uh, box art of the triplane, the, uh, the Fokker, and shooting down a, a French plane of a uh, Sockworth Campbell by looks of things. Three colours, uh, sorry, four options. B option is Rick Toffin's airplane, the Red Baron, but it's his early version just before it was painted complete red. But all four of these are aces, and they did receive that Blue Max medal, um, hence why it's in the kit. Um, but as I say, check out the YouTube channel from Great War. They go into it de more detailed than I do. Tools needed, pretty standard. The colours required for the kit are on the back of the book. Um, it's done by Ming, Mig and AK colours, and this one here. Uh, how you pronounce it? Uh, Air, 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 Aeroson, which is basically uh, Mr. Hobby Colors. Um, your first step is working on the seat belts, are oh, the material ones, which 
are here. We will take a uh, closer look. So you start with the two, two, two strips, another strip across the centre, fold it over. Being it's material type paper, uh, so imagine you should be able to glue it with just normal PVA glue type thing. You do get the metal parts of Feather Etch and the colour callouts for those are like an olive drab colour. So you want to do them nicely. You might want to uh, chip these up a little bit with silver because obviously seat belts being used, they're going to get worn down and a little bit of a wash should make these seat belts look nicely. Internals, you have a fabric piece in the real aircraft, a bulkhead, your seat, cushion, and this is how it's assembly and your seatbelt coming in. There are lap belts as well, but you put them on later because I have already checked out this kit. I've already gone through it well, once just to check out what's in it. Um, as I say, your seat is uh, like a brown leather colour. Inside of the seat is like a lighter brown. The actual seat itself, they're calling out for metal. This is like a linen colour because it is fabric. Um, that assembly. This section here. It's part of the uh, fuel tank assembly, I believe. Part of the uh, gun assembly, pedals, and that kind of thing. Instrument uh, dials. Um, this called out for to be silver, and the piping and pedals are all done in gloss black. I have checked my references; that is correct. Um, you want to chip these black parts up because obviously it is metal but painted black. Inside the cockpit is the frame which is like scaffolding type frame in here they're calling out for um, two options you do have to pay attention because the a and c version aircraft have a call out for the framing to be like an olive green color german olive green and the other b and d's version is calling out for black framing so again check your references and go as you do you got a compass to put in this is the floor Again, it'd be in the real aircraft it would be made of wood, so you want to do a wood colour effect. Um, your flight stick, there is two types for A and C version and B and D version. I am going to probably do Richthofen's aircraft, the early version of the Red Baron, which would be B version, so I'll be following B along. Once you've built up the uh, seat previously and the side of the cockpit can go together, you can start assembling these small sub assemblies and it starts to make up the cockpit you weren't going to want to paint all of these individually and put it together because there's a lot of different colors um, and now you once you've built up the cockpit section you can start attaching your lap belts because they are asking you through to hook them onto the uh, frame here if you want to add extra detail um, you can rig up parts of the uh, cockpit with structural rigging and the blue lines on the bottom uh, sorry red lines are cables or basically the flight cables for the aircraft but you just run them inside and that's it you're not going to need to run them to the back of the aircraft because you're not going to see them but you if you want to add more detail you can do so it doesn't tell you the length and it doesn't tell you the thickness of cable um, so you're going to have to judge it yourself side of your fuselage halves Drill holes out, it's telling you 5mm and so forth. This triangle piece in brown in the real aircraft is made of plywood. So you want to do a plywood wood effect. And at the outside of the aircraft is going to be the linen. Inside the linen colour is like an off-white colour. And then you can sandwich it all up. It is kind of wingnut, wish, wingnut wings-esque style and wing of... Uh, Taking it on, and you can see there is some changes, and it's got their kind of style to it. Um, I haven't seen the 30 second kit, so I can't say for sure how close this is and if it has been upscaled or not. But it seems good to me, I like it. The kit does look pretty cool. We have the bulkhead, they're calling out for silver. We have the center cap for parts of mounting the engine, and we have bits of bits of. Uh, inside near the engine and these are calling out for gloss black um, we have a structural spar on the uh, lower of aircraft we have the skid at the back we have these photo etch parts that at the back of the aircraft 
is more cables coming through and rigging. What I do like about the uh, D1, it doesn't have a lot of rigging. Um, World War One aircrafts can be quite uh, tricky to do with rigging, and I struggle with rigging because I haven't actually done it. So, like I say, I'd like the D1 because it hasn't got a lot. We have these panels on the side. You can attach your tail uh, and uh, fins and another piece at the back, another spars for structural strength. Uh, this piece, I know on the uh, 32nd kit for sure, people had these parts were broken at the early stages. So I can tell this has been taken from the 32nd, but hopefully it's a lot stronger. We have this piece on the inside, um, it's to do with the machine guns, again you've got different colours, I just imagine it would be the gloss black and olive green, whatever version you're doing. You've got your main wings, you can see down here it's got structural strength, which we will take a look at. It's asked you to cut out some notches, because on the leading edge of the wing there are these plugs, which are here. It's again, make sure you're doing the right options, because A and C on the outside and B and D are slightly on the inside and they are painted black sandwiching the two halves of the wings together and putting your strengthening arms in you can attach that to the aircraft but it all depends how uh, what type of colour scheme you're doing you may want to paint these individually before mounting it to the aircraft you don't want to build the whole aircraft and try and paint it separately because some parts are uh, not all the same colour. Again, these are the middle wings, I believe. Um, again, you've got to cut out the notches, but make sure you do it in the right place because you've got those pieces going on the leading edge of the wing. Attaching the uh, middle wing and lower wing together, and we have the uh, bottom part. Machine gun assembly. You get two options. You do get plastic moulded ones, or you get moulded machine gun, but you do get uh, further etch metal shields. I do know in this kit, the metal shields are already mold, uh, folded for you, so they're already rolled, which is a nice touch. Uh, left and right uh, machine guns, your option. We have the mounting brackets for your machine gun going in. And this is what it looks like once it's done. This is the uh, inside the cockpit. Hopefully it should look like that when you've done it. About all painted in different styles. We have some more instrument binnacles going in. Uh, upper wing section again. Making sure you've got the uh, leading edge plugs in place. I don't know actually what they're for. Attaching your upper wing. But again, depending on your paint scheme, you may want to paint it separately and attach it later. Flaps going in, the standard. Lower landing gear wing, so it's two halves and the wheels. The wheels come as two piece. Um, tires and centre cap is one and then the cap on the other side. Should be pretty uh, simple. It's going to take a mask to uh, mask them up. Attaching your uh, landing gear, which is fixed on the uh, World War One aircraft. And the uh, structural part parts for that we have a piece at the back of the aircraft we go on to the engine which is a rotary engine what I mean by that is as the propeller is attached to the engine the propeller and engine spins all together unlike a unlike a radial engine where each piston fires individually and the uh, engine stays in place it's just the center crank that spins so um, weirdly enough there's some craziness on this engine um, exhaust pipes are on the end hence uh, I'm not sure if you know about this but the reason why World War One pilots wear a scarf is because of the oil on this engine will come out of the uh, pistons and splatters over the aircraft hence why the pilots wear a scarf so they can wipe their goggles and stuff um, a crazy design um, but again the engine comes with two halves you've got the ex exhaust pipes and whatever 
we have the pin for the uh, propeller system attaching your engine to me there is different variants on these type of engines I have looked at references to me it looks like it's back to front but some are facing this way and some are facing the other way it all depends we have the cowling going in some aircraft I've seen from World War II and triplane they have a smiley face on the front of their plane but these ones don't we have two types of propeller but I know within the kit there are four propellers so you can tell for, sh for sure at a later date there's going to be more variants of this type of plane coming out I guarantee if I'm not mistaken Ming probably will release the Red Baron um, it'd be silly not to um, so you've got two type of propellers make sure you which one you're doing again it's B and C version and A and D version i am be doing the B version which has got the slight curve to it not the straight propeller um, it's going to take a nice wood grain effect um, I know World War 1 propellers have these weird lines going through it um, check out this picture um, next step is the rigging it's a little bit vague but like I say I do like the D1 because there isn't, there isn't a lot of rigging so it's a little bit of rigging out of the back on both sides a couple of pieces on the underside you have a cross member by the wheels and a cross member at the top so that's it pretty much all the parts within the kit pretty standard and then you've got your colour options um, these are all famous aces and they did receive that blue max medal um, hence why it was in the kit um, and they had the nickname of the flying circus reason why they got their nickname is because all German air aeroplanes were generally bright colours and this scheme here is how you pronounce I'm not sure if you pronounce if I'm gonna pronounce his name right. I do apologise if I get it wrong. Is this is Uditz aircraft. Um if you do pronounce it like that. Um one thing I did notice within the decal sheet, um you do get the uh, crosses, but these stripes, black and white stripes, are not on the decal sheet, so you're gonna have to paint them yourself. Or you're going to have to later on find a aftermarket decal sheet to do those stripes. Um, but again, the underside of the aircraft is blue. Uh, we have the uh, linen colour on the squares for the crosses to go on. You've got your black and white stripes. And then this edge section and the side of the aircraft, what looks like wallpaper effect. Um, I'm 100% sure how, how well or how you're going to pull that off. Because again, it doesn't come as a decal. So... I'm not sure how you're gonna we're gonna do that style. Now this one here's Rick Topfin's aircraft, um, the, the Red Baron, as, as he's known as. But this is the early version, uh, March uh, 1918. So it's just before he got his Red Baron. I do record by watching one of his videos on on the history of him. Uh, he had a paint scheme. In a space of two months, he painted his, he had his aircraft painted about five or six times, and this is the one before the Red Baron, and um, made him famous and stuff. But again, you got leading edge of the wings uh, is all red, and then you got red segments. But then I notice on this one, there I did make a mistake. Again, these under wings they've painted in red, but on the real aircraft. Um, it's got this paper wall paper effect uh, brown colour so you're going to have to do this on the side of the aircraft and middle wing and lower wing is done in this effect underside is blue and it's got the uh, linen squares we have this scheme here the pilot for this aircraft is Rudolf Klinker if that's how you pronounce it I do apologise um, but it's, this is quite brightly coloured and uh, it's, getting, it's got that wallpaper effect it's got the anchor symbols and it's got the yellow nose and yellow tail and white white tail and sort of yellow yellow bit at the back uh, yellow w w wings at the back again it's got the uh, famous blue colour squares for the linen and then it's got this wallpaper effect all over the top like I say I, I just don't know how you're going to achieve that um, so 
So I'm going to have to uh, invest in maybe decals for that, or if I do decide that scheme, or we're going to have to try and work something out. Anyone knows how I could achieve this effect? Uh, leave it in the comments down below. This one here is Klimf aircraft. You can't really make a mistake with this one because he's got his name on the bottom of the aircraft. Sorry, on the top of the aircraft. Um, so you can't really make a mistake. His is, again, it's got the stripe, but it's more of a green colour this time. He, and he's got the white and black. His tail is half and half, white and black. It's a black nose. Again, it's got the blue underside. And the colour callouts. You're going to have to do your references because I don't have these colours in both manufacturers. So I'm going to have to uh, do my conversions. So as for the pickles, Ming and their staples, just like Tamir. We have this piece of paper, fabric type material. This is for your seat belts. They are laser cut. Um, and it's white on the other side, so I imagine a bit of PVA glue should hold these together. Here's your decal sheet. Does look to be in register and nicely in colour. Um, doesn't actually say who makes theirs, apart from it's made in China. I imagine Ming do their own decals. I'm not 100% sure. But all the crosses seem to be be done really nicely. The white is nice and vibrant. The red does seem nice and sharp. We do have instrument binnacles and dials. There are two types of crosses. The uh, straight edge and curved ones. And then there's the clinth done in nice bold lettering. Doesn't seem too thick. I'm not sure about the carrier film. I don't know how well you can see that there are carrier film in between the anchor parts and the lettering. Um, even down to the small writing, it's not generic blur. The instrument dials do, do look pretty cool. You're not going to see them anyway, probably. The compass looks a bit out of shape. That's a bit of a shame. But the rest of them seem okay. While I'm here, I will show you the further edge parts. Comes in this nice foam. You can see here, these are the uh, uh, casing or shell, shrouds, shrouds for the um, guns. Like I mentioned, they are already uh, folded for you and rolled over. So it's just a case of slotting them over the guns, which is a nice touch. I find folding photo etch can be quite tricky and bending it. Here are the seat belts, attachments, um, and the gun parts of the gun, and some buckles and some structural parts for the aircraft for at the back of the airplane. I know that is. Again, you probably want to paint these and primer these first, and then paint these with this. Uh, Quiet colours and whatever you need to do. So we put this back in here so it gets detected. We don't want to get this damaged. When it comes to build this, it's going to be a lot of first for me because there's a lot of stuff that I've never done before, especially with the propeller. Um, detailing the engine up a certain way. Um, normally I just paint it silver, a little bit of a wash, and that's normally done because this is a little bit bigger of a kit you probably want to try and do as much as you can and go all out so let's start with the kit itself so I moved you out a little bit so let's have a look at the kit itself
So here's the uh, wings and the side of the aircraft. I know on the 132 scale, people had issues with this part. It was breaking. And I know this is taken from the uh, 132, but I can't say for sure about the rest of it because I don't remember calling this structural spars on the 132. Um, it's nice they've done this now because uh, it makes the wing stronger. It's not going to fold in on itself or be quite soft and it's going to give it structural strength. It was inside the aircraft. There are ejector pins you can have to take care of, unfortunately. But again, this triangle piece is the uh, wood, wood grain effect and it's the ply part. And again, it's got ejector pins in there. That's one thing I don't like about Ming. Ming do put their ejector pins in awkward places, especially on detail parts like this, because you would see it. We have the tail. This is the lower section. This looks like the middle wing. This looks like middle wing as well, upper, and this looks like lower. This round the cockpit area. This is the uh, lowest wing between the landing gear. And this is sprue F. There isn't many sprues in this kit. But it's, once you do all your detail work and painting nicely and a little bit of scratch building probably, with wires and cables and you should come up with a nice model. Um, Hence why I bought this kit, for two reasons. One, actually three reasons. One, I like a uh, D1 anyway. Two, is in 124 scale. Because it's a, uh, in general, if you get it in a 132 scale, 148, even one second, it's such a small airplane. So even in 124 scale, it's, it's still quite small, in my opinion. It's not exactly a big airplane. So in this case, for me, it's it's going to be easier for me to work on. And plus it comes with the middle because it's the collector's option and I do like collecting collecting stuff in general. So I, this is probably my third medal that I've collected. Um, I think I do have a Blue Max but a smaller version. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to have to uh, check it out. But this is the uh, upper wing I believe and then this is the lower section of it. These could be the middle ones. Again, it's got structural parts inside, which is nice and it's going to make it stronger. These pieces are is for where the landing gear goes. These are the uh, basically the legs. And this sprue here will contain pretty much everything else. There is a sprue for the engine and wheels clear but we get into that this sprue here has the uh, big triangle wing two top of propeller uh, the propeller i'll be needing is this one here it does have the slight curve to it these are the straight ones there are two other propellers within the kit which are not needed at all so it you can tell straight away there is going to be slightly different variants coming out of the d1 um, but again there, here is the machine guns are molded in plastic if you don't want to do those with the uh, metal parts you might as well do them anyway because it's already going to be easier to do there are the machine guns without the shield which you use the fellow wedge parts for there's that propeller with the curve there's the straight version you will use straight or curved version um, the other two are like I say are not needed there's the triangle tail there's a bulkhead, cockpit floor, there's that linen cockpit uh, bulkhead behind the seat. There is your seat itself, and the piece above it is the cushion. This piece down here is the uh, part of the uh, scaffolding frame for the cockpit. Here's part of the uh, structural part for above the fuel tank. This long piece is the uh, structural spine of the aircraft. We have piping. This piece here is for the engine mount. Here is the other side of the cockpit. More piping. Here's part of the fuel tank assembly. Um, you do get a uh, pistol type. I didn't realise that was in the kit at all. Levers. 
and stuff like that. There is another type of gun. I think one of them is like a flare gun. Your foot pedals and more um, parts for the internals of the cockpit. It looks like all the uh, levers and stuff. So here's a nice sprue. This sprue is sprue A. In this bag we have two sprues the same. It contains the wheels, the structural spars for the wings and flaps. So there are two of these. So you've got your uh, centre cap and the wheel itself. It's going to need masking, so two of those. But because there's two sprues, you're going to end up with four wheels. So if you do not make a mistake, you can result to uh, the other set. You've got your flaps. These are structural spars, and we've got small detail parts. So here's some of the small detail parts. Be super careful taking these off the sprue, especially this piece here. Here's the leading edge flaps. It's got the uh, scallop moulded into it, which is nice. Nicely moulded wheels and centre cap. Structural spars, so it's going to need a wood grain effect and painted metal parts. There's the other side of the uh, flaps. In this is the engine cowling, the lower wing. The other two propellers. So two propellers which are not needed. Uh, front cowling, lower wing which is the small wing in between the uh, wheels. This is the uh, centre engine cap and then we've got one of the flight sticks. So here is the other propeller. And the other one. Here's the nice moulded engine cowling. It's got the bolts and moulded into it. There it is raised, and it would be. It's not going to be uh, flush. Here's the centre wing between the landing gear. Again, it's got structural pins. Uh, it should be all nicely. There are ejector pins. You may need to take care of those because it might affect the fit. But there's nothing we can't take care of as modellers. One of the flight sticks. So be careful taking it off the tabs either end and the top piece is all you need. Do not cut these old bits off because that's how it's moulded. I was looking at this for a long time to try and work it out. It's easy done to cut these off and screw it up. So one here, one here and one at the top and that's it. A little bit of clean up but just be careful because it is moulded quite thinly. This sprue contains your engine detail, or engine, in general. Looking at the real engine on reference pictures, it, it's not going to need any wiring because this is basically all you need. Um, so, here are the cylinders, and the other side. Have part of the uh, rod system. These are the uh, copper pipes for exhaust. Um, and then these pieces are the center caps, uh, center cap for the propeller system. Here's the center cap for the engine. These are the edge, leading edge of the uh, pistons. And here's the uh, center crank. Um, like I say, it is a weird engine. It spins at the same time as the propeller. Um, and oil and smoke comes out of the uh, leading edge of the uh, engine. Uh, hence why, like I said before, pilots wear a scarf to clean their goggles because oil and smoke just get splattered all out of the engine. Um, uh, when it comes to paint this, you probably want to do a little bit of engine splatter on the cowling and stuff and down the side of the aircraft. Um, say one of the videos I will link, it does talk about the engine, um, how much uh, oil the airplane goes through. 
This is the clear. No problems because it's all flat glass. Absolute crystal clear, lovely. So let's pop this back because I don't want to get damaged. But oh, one more thing is the medal, is the Blue Max that comes with the collector's edition kit. Um, and there it is, all in its glory. Nicely done, nice replica. Um, if you like these type of things, go ahead and get the uh, collector's version. If not, just get the kit. Um, it is hide it, uh, given to the uh, highest reward uh, per participants of World War One uh, on the German side. Um, yeah, it's a nice replica, nice, nicely done. So it'd be nice to wear or even display with your model when it's done anyway. So there you are, my friends. There's another kit from Ming, uh, 124 scale, as uh, their Fokker D1 triplane. Nicely done. This is the collector edition, like I say, with the Blue Max. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.